Okay, now that we have our player control set up, let's start generating our running course. Uh, and as I said, we want to make a course that just keeps generating endlessly as we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a blueprint that is basically a floor tile, and we're going to keep spawning that as we run. So let's start by going to our blueprint folder and making a new blueprint class, and we'll make that an actor. And we'll call this BP Floor Tile. And we're going to open that up. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a scene component. Because I want to be able to move around and scale the things below it. So now we could add a bunch of fancy static meshes. But since we're just doing a prototype here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the basic shapes that's included. And just add a cube here. And I'll call this Floor. And I'm going to change the scale on it, make it 10 by 10 by 0.1. And the original cube is actually 100 units in size, so by making this 10 by 10, we now have a 1,000 unit uh, floor tile. And while we're at it, why don't we just add some, I don't know, brick. There we go. The scale's a little weird, but hey, it looks like a floor. Anyway, uh, we'll take that, and what we're going to do next is we're going to move this 500 units up on X. This is the direction that we're going to be running in. And the reason is, I want the origin of the blueprint to be here. And we'll see why in a few moments. Anyway, so we now have that. I'm going to duplicate it. Call it wall. Change the scale a little bit. Make Y.1. Make Z2 or something. Move that over. Minus 500. And up a little bit. And I'll duplicate it again. Get wall two. And pull it over to the right side. Not super fancy, but here we have our little floor tile. And we're going to be able to spawn these in the world as we run. So one more component I want to add before we move on to spawning them. Is I'm going to go in and add an arrow component. And I'm going to call this attach point. And I'm going to move that up a thousand units to the other edge. So basically what I'm going to do is, and this is just a little arrow, what I want to do is I'm going to spawn one of these and then after I spawn it I'm going to use the position of this to be the place that I put my next floor tile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little utility function here and I'm going to say get attach transform. And all this is going to do is it's going to look at my attach point. I'm going to get its world transform. And then I'm going to use that as a return variable. So it'll be type transform. And I'll say uh, attach transform. And I'll plug that right in there so we just get it back. So we'll be able to call this at any point and find out where in the world that arrow is and use that as a point to attach our next floor tile. So we'll compile and save that and then go back to the map. Now next thing we're going to do is we're going to just do a new level and we're going to use the default. We don't need to save what we have. Now in here there's a bunch of different ways we could spawn these tiles. One we could make a new blueprint that is say our course generator and we could have that generate other tiles. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the game mode just because it's super easy to access and it's already here so I'm going to rename this run game mode and I'm going to spawn my tiles from this so I'll open that up and since this is data only we're going to need to hit the open full blueprint editor and now we can add some script so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a function and you're going to find that I love functions um, I'm going to call this add floor tile there are a bunch of different ways you can organize your stuff, organize your script and blueprint. You can add, you know, collapse graphs, um, lots of different ways you can do it. I personally like functions a lot, um, just because I don't like to have a long chain of stuff with a bunch of uh, different things in it. And this way I can just call a bunch of different functions and I can kind of see the overview of what my logic is doing without getting into the nitty gritty of what each function itself is doing. So anyway, I'm going to have a function called add floor tile, and what I'm going to do is exactly that. I'm going to spawn an actor from class and the actor I'm going to spawn is going to be my BP floor tile. Now we're going to need a transform for this so I'm going to make this a variable and I'm going to call it 
Next, let me actually select that. Next, spawn point. And you'll see why in a minute. So now that we have this little function, I'm going to go to our event graph. I'm going to hold P and click and get an event begin play. And when we start playing, I'm immediately going to add a floor tile. Now let's go over and check this out. We'll go ahead and kill the floor that's here. We'll delete that. And let's simulate this. And there we go. We get a floor tile spawned in the world. Now one thing I notice here, real quickly, we have our player start here. And when we spawn, it's right right on the edge of that. So it'd probably be better if we had it up there somewhere. So let's move that up about, I don't know, 200 some units. So now that when we play, we're going to be more on the floor and not just on the edge there. So next, what we're going to do is we'll go back to our game mode. We'll go back to our floor tile, add floor tile function. I'm going to drag off the return value and I'm going to cast to BP floor tile. And after we cast to it, I'm going to call that function that we made, which is get attach transform. So it's going to ask, where is that arrow on you? And then what we'll do is we'll assign that to the next spawn point. So now what we have here is we have a little function that is going to take a transform, spawn a tile, and then ask that tile, where, where do I attach the next tile? And it's going to save that off. So the next time it gets called, it's going to use that point to spawn the next tile. So what we can do here is we can go back to the event graph where we did this, and we can stick in a for loop. And we can say make this 0 to 9 and get, obviously, 10 floors. Programmers and their crazy zero-based counting. So 0 to 9, we're going to have 10 floors. So if we go and we simulate this, there we go. We've got 10 of these floor tiles in a row. Now, as I said, we want to make an infinite course. And it would be a really, really bad idea to go in here and somehow make this an infinite loop because computers just don't like doing that. And they're going to want to crash. And it's just not good. So what we'll do is we'll set up a system where as we pass each floor tile, we'll tell it to add more floor tile. So let's go to our floor tile again, go to our viewport, and we're going to add a box collision. And we'll call this end trigger. And we're going to move this off to the end, funny enough. Uh, we'll change the Y to 500 and the Z to about 200. And we'll move it up a little bit so that it's a little bit higher. Okay, so now we have this nice little trigger at the end of our floor. We're running from left to right here. So we're going to set the collision on this to overlap only pawn. And then we'll go in and add a begin overlap event. We'll hit the plus here and add that. So what we'll do, first we'll check the other actor. And we will cast to our run character. Let's just do a little quick check to make sure that that's our player. And if it is, we'll get the game mode. This is just our general game mode. We'll cast that to our custom run game mode. And then in that custom run game mode, we'll call our add floor tile function. So we'll add another floor. And we don't want to keep the old floors around, so what we'll do here, we'll add a delay. Say, I don't know, two seconds for safety. And then we'll destroy actor and keep that to self. So all it's going to do is when we hit that end trigger, it'll call the game mode, say, hey, spawn another floor tile, wait a couple seconds, and then destroy ourselves. So if we look at this in the game, if we play, then I'm immediately going to F8 and jump out and look off in the distance. As the guy runs, you can see that we get more tiles generated in the distance. And behind him, you're going to also see that the floor tiles start disappearing. And this could go on and on forever and just keep running, but it's not all that exciting of a game. So in the next video, let's start adding some obstacles and make it a little bit more exciting.